Hey all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren and today we're going to do some more dry aging with Umai Dry Bags. I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. All right, all. I had uh, just recently had Thea, uh, the CEO for a My Dry on my podcast, and we discussed a lot of things, including the dry age bags and what you can and can't dry age, how you should do it, all that, uh, the history of the company. I just recently ordered and had processed a whole steer from a friend of mine that um, raises cattle and filled up my freezer with a lot of beef. Also, I kept a lot of the uh, subprimals and primals whole. I kept the ribeyes whole. Uh, I kept the uh, strip loins whole, the top sirloins and all that because I wanted to dry age some with the UMI bags. So I've already got the uh, primals in the bags. I went through the process already. I don't want to bore you with that. It's really easy. I've done videos on uh, doing the dry age bags before, but um, I, I am going to go over some of the uh, little idiosyncrasies about this stuff uh, when I take it out of the bags and kind of show you so I will show you some pictures of what it looked like before going in the bag and what it looked like coming out and all that so Umai offers several different size bags and each one has all the instructions that you need on how to dry age they come with uh, stickers for uh, so you can tell when you put it in and when it needs to come out it has the vac mouse which actually helps you um, vacuum seal the bags without getting any of the moisture into your vacuum sealer the bags are a little bit different than a regular vacuum seal bag because these are a membrane that actually lets moisture out of the bag and blocks any bad stuff getting into the uh, into the bag and get it to the meat. Each pack of bags actually comes with really detailed instructions on how to use them and also they have plenty of videos on their YouTube channel and on their website showing you how to use these bags with different various things. <clears throat> One of the things that I really um, like to stress with people is you pretty much have to use a whole subprimal or primal uh, section you need to use a whole ribeye um, you can cut the ribeye in half but you can't really do individual steaks and it's not that you can't it's it just doesn't make sense because when you dry age you're releasing moisture and you're getting some um, desecrated meat on the outside that needs to be trimmed off so if you just did let's say a two inch ribeye steak you would have to trim off a lot of that. It's going to lose a lot of moisture and lose, it's going to shrink. So you'll end up, if you have, a, let's just say, a, you know, two pound ribeye, bone in ribeye, it's going to be like a one pound at the end and it's going to be really thin and you're going to have to take a lot of time to trim it up and it's not going to be worth it. It's always better to take a full or a bigger piece of meat. To dry age it so that you can uh, have a better time when you're trimming it and you keep a lot more of the meat that way. It's really easy. Uh, Umai makes it really easy to do. You can use your regular refrigerator. You don't need special equipment. Um, you just pretty much got to do it the way they, they show you how to do it. You make sure that you do a clean transfer into your bag. Make sure you get uh, contact with the bag all around so that the uh, moisture can leave the bag and uh, and uh, help it dry out and, and do what it's supposed to do. So, all right guys, that's it for now. I'll bring you back when I'm taking these out of the bags and showing you what I got going on. All right guys, I will be back. All right guys, just showing you what my New York strip loin looked like before it went in the bag. I did not, um, these were not cryo packed, so these were uh, wrapped in butcher paper. This is also my ribeye section here, but they weren't wrapped in butcher paper. They were wrapped in butcher paper and not cryo pack, so I wasn't able to do a clean transfer like they show you on my dry. This here is the top sirloin. I kept it whole with the picanha on top and the fat cap. So I did, uh, I did kind of wash them off, get some water on them so that they get uh, a really good seal. This is what they look like in the bag. 
So you want to have some moisture on them so when you do vacuum seal them in the uh, bag that they get a nice seal and look just like this. Alright guys, well here you go. This is 30 days. Wow, sorry, some big trucks going by behind me. 30 day dry age. I have a ribeye, uh, ribeye primal right here. This is a New York strip or a strip loin right here. And I got a top sirloin. So I only did 30 days. I don't like to go much longer than that. I've done 45 days before. Much longer than that. You lose a lot more of the meat. Um, and it does start to getting a much more funky flavor. Some people like that. And uh, since these were kind of smaller primals, I didn't want to go much more than uh, 30 days on it. So there you go. I'm going to go ahead and get these out. Um, some people will use the trimmings and grind them up into, into your ground beef and all that. I don't, um, and then, you know, even you know, my dry doesn't really recommend it. There's people that do it. I don't know if there's anything wrong with it or not. I just, I've done it once to see if I liked it. And I found that it was really kind of hard even when I put it in the grinder to mix in with ground beef. It didn't really give me a much better flavor than if I hadn't added it. And it was kind of chewy. You could get little chunks of it in there that kind of, you know, were, were really chewy. So I didn't really particularly care for it. People do it. You can, if you want to do it, that's great. You can go ahead. I'm not going to argue with you about that. Personally, I don't like to do it. But there you go, guys. I'm going to go ahead and take these out of the bags. And this is what your meat should look like. It shouldn't have any kind of mold or anything on it. If we go longer than 30 days, you might develop some white mold or something on there, which isn't a bad thing. But this is uh, normally what it looks like. It, uh, it's kind of hard out here. It's, if you thump it, it's going to hurt you because it's kind of hard. But All right, so I'm going to trim some of these up, and then I'll just show you what they look like when I'm done trimming them. All right, I'll be back. All right, guys, instead of having to look at my face, I'm just going to show you the close up here so you can just see what the meat now you can see that uh, this my dry bag is really stuck to this meat so that's kind of what you're looking for it doesn't all have to be completely and it won't be a vacuum seal that's for sure and it won't uh, all be completely stuck but as if you got most of it that it's stuck to the meat itself it did its job it let the moisture out didn't let any bad stuff in and as you can tell it really worked I'm just going to do, this is my ribeye here. And like I said, these were kind of smaller ones that I got from my beef that I ordered. So you can get larger ones if you go to Costco and all that. This one is just happens to be a smaller one. But I am going to just go ahead and take this off. As you can tell, this is how it should be. It should be kind of mostly stuck to your meat. That just means you had a really good seal and the Umai dry bag did its job. You want to make sure you get all of this membrane off of there. And I'm going to take half of this ribeye and use it as a roast. And you can see you're going to have some of your myoglobin stuck to there and that's fine. We'll toss that. So that's what it looks like. I mean, it's, I said, it's kind of leathery here. <laughs> that's what it's supposed to be. So I'm going to take a good big part of this, uh, probably this, this end here, that where it kind of tapers down. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, use that as my ribeye roast. And I'll probably use that for Christmas. But I'm going to take it right, right about half here. So this will give me about a three and a half pound uh, rib roast, and I'll finish trimming that up later. So I'm going to do it right here. I'm just going to trim it. And like I said, this is dried, <laughs> aged, so it's not as pliable as it was when it was uh, first put in. So it is going to be kind of leathery, but once you get it all cut up and trimmed off, you'll have some pretty good steaks. And this is what it looks like inside. As you can see, got some nice marbling in there. And this is gonna be my ribeye roast. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim off the edges here. Just any of that hard stuff that's really hard. 
and then I'm just gonna really lightly trim and this stuff's kind of like beef jerky you just try to want to get as much as you can off don't try to get too deep into the meat though The good thing about these on my dry bags is you have a lot less trim loss because you don't really doesn't uh, get too deep into the meat, the uh, dried out portion. So there you go guys, right there it's about probably a two and a half, three pound ribeye roast here. It's a smaller one like I said, because this is a smaller ribeye, but that's what we'll have because it's just going to be four of us, and the rest of this I'll cut into steaks. I'll just kind of show you how I do it when I cut into steaks. I just kind of eyeball it here, I'm going to do like, you know, I'll use the thickness of my thumb sometimes and just go right here, I want to be an inch and a half. Try to get it as straight as possible. And then I just kind of trim right along the edge. And this is how I like to trim my steaks. It just makes it easier than trimming the whole thing like I just did with the ribeye roast. And control it a little bit better. Just want it where it's not discolored anymore and it's not that really hard beef jerky type. There you go. One little piece. Oh, and there's a perfectly trimmed ribeye. Okay. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Uh, I hope you gotta give them a try. If you haven't tried the Umai dry bags for your dry aging, give it a try. It makes it really easy to do at home. And uh, it's really affordable. You don't have to buy any special equipment. You can use your own refrigerator and uh, come out with some really good dry-aged beef. All right, I'm going to go trim the rest of this stuff up and get it to, I'll probably use it in some cook videos. But thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll see you again on the next Fire and Water Cooking video.